Since the earliest modern humans over 200,000 years ago, we've evolved and with that evolution came the advancement of the tools that we use and the technology we've created to automate tasks, save time and lives. But along the way, we've lost some of the most marvelous things that humankind has ever created. Here are 10 mysterious inventions that disappeared. Number 10 is Greek fire. First developed around 672 CE, Greek fire was used by the Byzantine Empire who at the time were being overwhelmed by Arab fleets. When they started using this new almost magical chemical compound, their ships began spitting out fire that consumed everything in its path and would even burn on water. Some scholars believe this discovery was so significant that it could have been only accredited to divine intervention, while others maintain it was created by a team of chemists in Constantinople who inherited scientific information from the Alexandrian school. Whatever the mixture included, it was so complex that despite stealing samples, other civilizations were never able to copy it. To this day, historians still debate the composition and manufacturing process of this epic weapon. Number 9 is Starlight. In 2016, a team of scientists discovered two materials capable of resisting temperatures of nearly 4,000 degrees Celsius. They recorded these as some of the most heat resistant materials in existence today. However, nearly 30 years earlier, a hairdresser with no chemistry training named Maurice Ward invented a special plastic that could actually withstand a nuclear flash and temperatures reaching nearly 10,000 degrees Celsius. That's hot than the surface of the sun. He set out to see if he could create a substance that would withstand intense heat without emitting toxic smoke or gases. Ward eventually discovered the formula for starlight, but he died in 2011 having never patented his formula. It still remains a mystery to this day. Number 8 is Damascus Steel. Created between the 3rd and 17th centuries, Damascus steel swords were amazing weapons that were forged in such a specific way that they could split a feather in mid-air, yet retain their sharp edge through countless use in battles. Damascus was, and continues to be, revered by blade wielders and smiths from all around the world, but its production was brought to an end rather abruptly around the year 1750. Not only did the raw material deposits necessary for its production run out, but there was also a loss of knowledge on the crafting techniques due to secrecy, lack of transmission, and the suppression of the industry by India by the British Raj. Two metallurgists from Stanford may have recently stumbled upon the secret of Damascus steel, but there's no way to confirm their claim. Number 7 is the Lycurgus Cup. A colorful chalice stored in the British Museum may seem rather inconsequential at first glance, but a closer look reveals that it is in fact an ancient example of nanotechnology. This 4th century Roman glass cage cup changes color depending on how light hits it. When it's lit from inside it looks red, but when it's lit from the outside it appears green. The explanation for this phenomenon was obtained only in 1990 after scientists analyzed the cup using an atomic force microscope and found that the two colors observed are due to the colloidal or mixed dispersion of gold and silver nanoparticles. Alchemists around 1661 had knowledge of potential applications for the use of nanoparticles. However, they didn't have science-based explanations for the observed phenomena. We're only starting to gleam them now. Number 6 is Stradivari's Instrument. 
Andrea Amati is credited with inventing the modern violin in the 1500s. His instruments were so successful that the designs were copied for generations. Antonio Stradivari, who was born 139 years later, inherited Amati's methods and designs, but then improved on them until he was manufacturing instruments now widely considered to be unrivaled. A well-preserved Stradivarius violin was sold in an online auction in 2011 for a record 9.8 million pounds. The secret behind their perfect sound has mystified experts for centuries, even though scientists in Taiwan recently used software, normally reserved for speech analysis, to find that the violins from these two genius craftsmen mimic aspects of the human voice. We still aren't sure how to go about recreating their manufacturing process. Number 5 is Silphium. Though it wasn't so much of a human invention itself, the multitude of applications devised for this incredible plant were absolutely human. Used in classical antiquity both as a seasoning and as a medicine, silphium's importance was highlighted by the Egyptians, who developed a specific glyph to represent it. The Romans often said that it was worth its weight in gold. In fact, this darling herb gets referenced in many Roman poems in songs. This versatile plant was said to treat coughs, sore throats, fevers, indigestion, aches, pains, warts, and all kinds of ailments. But its most cherished medicinal properties was used as a contraceptive. Julius Caesar went so far as to store a 680 kilogram cache of it in the official treasury. But today, silphium has vanished from our planet altogether. Number four is flexible glass. We can thank the Phoenicians for coming up with a man-made glass. In fact, without it, you wouldn't be able to watch this video, and I wouldn't be able to shoot it. But imagine glass you could bend and then watch return to its original form. Glass that you could drop on the ground yet doesn't break. Stories say that an ancient Roman glassmaker had the technology to create flexible glass, but the Emperor Tiberius Caesar decided to have his workshop shut down. This was a move presumably made to prevent the value from precious metals like gold, silver, and copper from being depreciated by this new material. The emperor asked the glassmaker if anyone else knew how to make this flexible kind of glass, and the craftsman said no, and thus was quickly executed, taking his secret to his grave. Number three is the death ray. Imagine an invisible wall of energy protecting a country from invasion, one that could vaporize enemy soldiers the second they crossed the border. Militaries around the world long for this kind of death ray, but famed inventor Nikola Tesla claimed to have actually created one. His high-minded dreams were only limited by a serious budget restriction. He approached the governments of the United States and the Soviet Union, among others, but none offered him any money for it. One night in 1937, during a meeting at the Yugoslav Embassy, Tesla told the room that not only was his invention possible, but that he already built one. In fact, he would be unveiling it to the world in a matter of months, but later that year he was struck by a car and never recovered. In 1943, he passed, taking his death ray secret with him. Number two is Cloud Buster. Austrian physicist William Reich invented a device that reportedly manipulated organ energy, a cosmic life force which happens to be the energy that holds clouds together. Reich's cloud buster is a set of hollow tubes pointing to the sky, grounded by a connection to water. It could supposedly form or disperse clouds and cause or prevent rain. In 1953, blueberry farmers in Maine offered to pay Reich if he could successfully end a drought that threatened the crop. Reich set up his cloud buster and operated it for just over an hour, and the next morning it started raining and the crop was saved. A modern version of instructions exist to construct the cloud buster. They're more sophisticated than Reich's, but haven't yielded the same results as the original, now vanished, design. And number one is the chronovisor. 
Time travel has long been debated by conspiracy theorists and scientists alike, but in 1972, an Italian newspaper published an article titled, A Machine That Photographs the Past Has Been Invented. The article alleged that this machine named the Chronovisor was capable of allowing users to look into future and past events, supposedly invented by people inside the Vatican. The man said to have led the project was Father Ernetti, a physicist from Italy who went on to become a priest. Apparently, he received important technical information from Enrico Fermi, a Nobel laureate, and rocket scientist Werner von Braun. The Vatican has always denied any claims of owning such a machine and has said that if anyone is using such a machine that they would be excommunicated, but we'll likely never know for sure. Thank you to everyone for subscribing to my channel and a special thanks to all of my channel members, especially the ones you see on your screen right now. All of you help keep my channel going. Thanks again and I'll see you next time.